Hey, folks, this is the Wayne S. Crew Show podcast for the 8th of uh, October, 2014. How y'all doing today? Hey, how can we... How can we find the most accurate, factual story that we hear? How can we research it to find the truth, find the facts, find, uh, find how accurate it truly is? Well, you go to the source. You go to the source, and if your source is a news article, I wouldn't even think about it. I'd go find something else. If there was somebody quoted in the story, go to that source. If there was something quoted about a certain subject or issue, then go to that source where it was quoted from and just keep, in other words, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, why do we, and I see this on Facebook all the time, all the time, all the time. I don't know. I can't even count anymore how many times I've seen it. The uh, responses that I get on Facebook about certain things or when I respond to someone else and the responses to that are just incredibly lacking in any type of insight whatsoever. And uh, I wonder... You know, I'm I'm just wondering. I'm 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 curious as to why people don't really want to even go and find this information. As I said before, I mean, you know, you read an article like well, recently I just read an article where uh, Walmart is cutting uh, benefits for 5% of 30,000 people. Now, that came from, uh, you know, a source. And that source is one of my friends on Facebook. But let me go and tell you exactly what the... Uh, what the uh, well, I'll just go to the notifications here. I'm not going to take the break at the uh, 5 after mark like I usually do, so I'll hit it at the 20 after mark. So just because I'm going to get into this article, because I have a point to make. And it's from <clears throat> Herman Cain's website, canetv.com. He was a former presidential candidate. And the headline reads, and it's, from, it's published by Dan Calabrese on Wednesday, uh, the 8th of October, 2014. And the headline is, by the way, Walmart gave part-timers health insurance until Obamacare. Uh, those who work less than 30 hours a week now being dumped onto exchanges. One of the things Obamacare critics have warned about all along was that the law's perverse incentives would ca cause large employers to dump employees onto the Obamacare exchanges. It would simply make no economic sense to provide health insurance to certain employees if doing so meant meeting all the arbitrary standards in the law. Now, with that in mind, it might surprise you to know that the left's least favorite corporate, uh, or excuse me, least favorite corporation has up until now provided health insurance to part-time employees, even those who work fewer than 30 hours uh, a week. But thanks to Obamacare, that's over. Quote, Autumn is, typically, Autumn is typically when U.S. companies unveil changes to employee insurance plans. This is the first in, uh, such enrollment period since, since employers could access the full financial impact of the federal health care overhaul. And it, it, it is a key moment as companies work to lower their spending ahead of looming taxes on the most generous plans. Many businesses are continuing to shift more costs to workers. Phoenix-based technology distributor Avnet Incorporated, uh, AVT, shows their stock price has gone down, for example, is paring back its traditional plans in favor of high deductible options. Other companies are reducing coverage for spouses, according to consultants at Tower Watson & Company. 
Still, others are going further, ending their traditional coverage for employees who will instead get a fixed sum of money to buy their own insurance on private exchanges. And uh, Aon Hewitt is set to announce that enrollment in it in its exchange will grow to around 850,000 workers and dependents next year as another 15 employers sign up. Several facets of the healthcare overhaul are driving concerns about costs. One is uh, coming one is the coming tax on so-called Cadillac plans which carry high premiums and offer rich benefits and other And another is the individual mandate that requires most workers to obtain coverage or else face a penalty. For Walmart, that push from the individual mandate contributed to an influx of workers who signed up for coverage jacking up costs. Walmart, the the country's largest private employer with about 1.4 million employees, forecasts that its health care costs will rise by $500 million than it had expected in the year ending January 31st, 2015. Unquote. The Wall Street Journal points out that Walmart is somewhat getting caught up in the consequences of its own decisions since it played a political game back in 2009 and endorsed Obamacare. Quote, Walmart endorsed Obamacare in 2009 and helped drag the bill through Congress, and so far it hasn't resented by, uh, <clears throat> by holding back economic growth and incomes. Perhaps the law is expanding the retailer's customer base. Another plus, at least for management, is that Walmart can jettison its employees into the Obamacare insurance exchanges. The Associated Press reported Tuesday that the largest U.S. private employer is dropping health benefits for some 30,000 workers, or about 5% of its part-time workforce. So I was wrong. It's 5%. That's uh, is uh, part-time workforce, Uh, not 5% of the 30,000 workers that uh, I said earlier. Uh, Earlier health plan eligibility triage in 2011 had removed tens of thousands of Walmart workers from the balance sheet, so this largest purge was uh, probably inevitable. Walmart cites its inability to manage higher than anticipated health expenses. Perhaps, though, wasn't Obamacare uh, supposed to bring those costs down? Obviously, the company is also responding uh, rationally to Obamacare's incentives, Uh, With a subsidized government alternative now open for business, and since corporations aren't liable for a penalty for not covering people who work fewer than 30 hours a week on average, cost control logic uh, says to send such coverage ballast over the side. Other retail and grocery chains, including Target, Home Depot, and Trader Joe's, have already done the same, unquote. If Obamacare is designed by liberals to be the step toward single payer, it couldn't be working any better. You leave your employer provided insurance nominally in place, but in practice, you impose standards that make it virtually impossible to maintain, and just like everyone uh, ends up getting dumped on the exchanges. And just like that, everyone gets uh, ends up getting dumped on the exchanges. Uh, in other words, don't pay them enough to pay the premiums, the employers. Don't pay them enough to pay the premiums. And, uh, well, the cost of paying those employers uh, goes up because of other costs, and therefore you dump the employees onto the Obamacare health exchanges. Eliminating totally your cost as an employer of that you know, burden. You you just toss those people aside and, okay, I don't have to pay them, you know, any additional money. Therefore, we can just pay them as minimal as we can and we'll dump them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Continuing, of course, employer-sponsored health insurance is no great thing in the first place. What we really need is to get a third-party payers out of the process as much as possible and empower people to pay their own bills directly to their providers in all but catastrophic situations but that doesn't empower government insurance companies or major corporations so you should know who democrats were really looking to serve when they shoved obamacare down the throats of the nation now we see the fruit of their efforts not pretty is it so there you go that's that 
And it tends to get, it's it's not tends, it is getting worse. It's getting worse because nobody is willing to stand up to this criminal, uh, tyrannical government. Now, I know a lot of people are going to argue with me and say, well, Obama did say he was going to do it, didn't he? Uh, Well, you're just going to have to deal with it. No, I'm not going to deal with it. Unless I have a catastrophic situation in my life that causes me to be disabled, whether it by natural processes of arthritis or whatever, then no. Here's the other thing. Every single company needs to realize one very important factor. That company would not be as big or as medium-sized to big company If it wasn't for the employees, I don't really understand why a company the size of Walmart, the size of Target, the size of Home Depot, the size of some manufacturing company in your area that has over, you know, three to four to five hundred, maybe a thousand employees, even in the casinos around the country in these areas, including the Indian casinos. I don't know why these companies that make these millions and millions and millions and billions of dollars a year cannot pay their people enough money, their employees enough money, so that they can go out and buy their own health insurance and dump their own, the the company-wide health insurance or provider, not the insurance, the provider. Just dump them. Pay the employees enough money to where they can go out and buy their own. I don't see why companies can't do that. Well, I know the economy sucks, but if you put more money in the employees' pockets, the more money that they have in their pockets, the more money they're going to spend elsewhere and help the economy in that local area, which, of course, there goes the domino effect. You begin to rebuild from the bottom up, not what the government does, and installs these things which pushes and oppresses and suppresses the innovation and creation and creativity of the entrepreneurs. Okay? That's just the way it is. Now, if you cannot understand that very basic factor about these companies... And if these companies will not implement these types of situations and these types of, uh, of, of ideas into their companies, they might as well just close their doors. They might as well just sell their company to an overseas you know, conglomerate. Oh, wait. Half of America is that way. I say half. I'm probably underestimating it. The basic understanding of society should be if I work by myself, I can get twice as much done with two other with with one other person in my you know that I employ to help me out. And if I make enough money, I'm going to pay that person enough. Now what's enough? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, get rid of the minimum wage. Get rid of the get rid of the corrupt unions. I don't know how many there are, but I'm sure most of them are. Get rid of the minimum wage, as I said, and implement a fair market living wage per region. Some regions have a lower cost of living, some have a higher cost of living. You pay accordingly. Now, a lot of companies and a lot of business people will tell me, well, my company doesn't make that kind of money and I can't pay my people what that region is telling me to pay those people. So if I have to pay them any more than X number of dollars an hour, I'm just going to have to close my doors because I can't afford it. So I understand that argument. We're caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm not an economic expert. So if you economic experts and you people in economics want to you know, uh, tell me where I'm wrong, tell me where I'm right, give me some insight, please do. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. We have to do something, folks. 
First of all, we need to, uh, well, our, my solution, other than what I just said, is an additional solutions would be this. Get rid of the Federal Reserve, get rid of the IRS. Get rid of them and cut 75% of all departments in Washington, D.C. Just cut them. Just get rid of them. You want to save billions and trillions of dollars? There you go. And how about this on a political level? Take Washington, D.C., shut it down. Tell, uh, and, and re-elect, or not re-elect, but elect all new people to go and be Congress. But here's what you do. Congress should only meet four times a year for the maximum length of six weeks. If they can't get anything done in that six weeks while they're in term, something's wrong. The president should not live in Washington, D.C. The president should not get paid if he is to serve this country in a leadership role. He should not get a check in his pocket. Everything else are the benefits, whatever, I'm, I'm okay with that, but not with him getting paid. Okay? That's, those, are, those are the things right there that would eliminate trillions of dollars being spent in Washington, D.C. The other thing is, get rid of the military and prison industrial complexes immediately. Immediately. You want to save trillions of dollars and stop prosecuting and, and, and oppressing and suppressing victimless crimes? There you go. Now, I don't know if any of that's right, so you law enforcement and you uh, law professors, send me your information, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. I'd like to know if that would ever work. I'm sure it will because the people would then be in control, not the government. Our founders said said it perfectly, and I'm only paraphrasing because I don't know exact quotes, but they said that if you have one branch of government in control, you got a tyranny. Well, we have the executive branch in control. It's a tyranny. That's what we live in right now. We live in a police state. You don't like me saying that? You don't believe me? Go check it out. We... Our, our founders created the three branches of government for that very reason so that one person would not rule over everyone. Okay? So anyway, getting on and on here with the show. <laughs> I'm going to go to break here in a little bit. <clears throat> but I want to remind you, that you can support Free America Radio Network with your donations to help Free America Radio Network get to the next level. We're scaling back a little bit in some areas because of the goals that I have for the network to move it to the next level. So you can always donate. I do accept PayPal and Bitcoin. I don't know how much longer those will last as viable options, but for now, that's what we got. Or you can sponsor the show. Go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Weebly. Com and uh, sponsor the show there. Go to the sponsors page, or you can go and get your emergency food supply right now, because you never know when the next natural or man-made disaster will happen. Check it out, folks. The Wayne S. Pierce Show. Weebly. Com site uh, and help out Free America Radio Network get to the next level and you can be a part of that. So anyway, go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com site. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, and even if you disagree with me, free America Radio at USA dot com. Free America Radio at USA dot com. You can go to the Free America Radio website at Free America Radio dot US. I'll be right back. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce from the Views Express. Come join me. Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on Spreaker.com.
Don't wait until another natural or man-made disaster strikes. Have at least 72 hours of emergency gear near you at all times, and that includes food. Get your emergency food supply today. Go to freeamericaradio.us and at the top of the page, click on the emergency food supply link. Help your family by purchasing as much emergency food supply as you need. You'll be helping out your family and Free America Radio Network. Thank you. This is Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network, and we are looking for sponsors. If you want to sponsor any of the shows on the Free America Radio Network, email us at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Our website is freeamericaradio.us. The world as we know it is changing. We must speak out against the tyranny in our country. Stand up. Speak out. Get involved. Live Truth Radio, the reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com Sharing the truth one fact at a time, this is the Free America Radio Network. Hey folks, welcome back. This is the Wayne S. Beer Show podcast for the 8th of October, 2014. How y'all doing? You good? All right, cool. Right on. Hey, um, lots of things happening. Go to the, let's go to, let's go to the web, shall we? Yes, 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 yes. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> lots of things let's go to facebook first you know there's a lot of it i talked about facebook earlier uh let's let, let, let let's let's go there shall we <laughs> okay <clears throat> so it is an interesting place to find a lot of interesting stories but specifically, let's go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. Um, I may not have a whole lot there right now. Uh, I've got a lot of... Uh, you can listen to the podcast that I have up there. Um, from DailyMail.co.uk, UN Ebola chief raises prospect uh, virus could mutate and become airborne. That was the 2nd of October. That was six days ago. And uh, I heard that again today. Now, is that, uh, is that just hyperbole? What's going on? Is somebody, you know, pulling the wool over your eyes and, you know, fear monger and all this, that, and the other thing? I don't know. Why don't you contact the CDC and find out? Oh, by the way, they're run by the military. Or they have someone uh, heading the group who is military. Uh, let's put it this way. <clears throat> You'll never know unless you go check out the information that I give you. I'm giving you my opinions. I'm, I'm telling you where to get this information, the websites, the sources, that kind of thing. All I ask is that, hey, if you don't believe me, go check it out. That, that's all I'm saying. That, that, that's all I'm saying. I, I, you know, hey, I could be wrong, in, in, but I don't think so because I may have overlooked something. So I'll just go back and look at it. No big deal. I, I'm fine with that. But I'm just giving you the information, and hopefully you check it out on your own. Draw your own conclusions on the information that I give you. From WoundedAmericanWarrior.com As of today, exposed. Nebraska school tells teachers to avoid gendered expressions. I find this interesting because... I remember being in the military myself, and it wasn't uh, yes, ma'am. It was yes, ma'am, no, uh, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. It was that, but it was more in some cases yes, sergeant, no, sergeant. It was 
you know, you went by the rank. Either way, it was interchangeable. But there was this push even then to eliminate gender in whatever we were doing. This is back in the early 80s. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. I am... The government, Washington, D.C., wants everyone to be alike. They want everyone to be dressed the same. They want everybody to be doing the same thing for the state. They want communism, pure, unadulterated, uninterrupted, uh, undefensible communism in the United States of America. That is why we have the tyranny at the level that it is now in the United States. We're about ready to collapse into a very communistic, very dark-sided communistic Society Now, whether or not you believe that, that's entirely up to you, but I do encourage you to go out and check this stuff out yourself. This is from WoundedAmericanWarrior.com. Exposed. Nebraska school tells teachers to avoid gendered expression. Excerpt from The Daily Caller. Nebraska Watchdog has uncovered training documents given to middle school teachers in Lincoln, Nebraska. Anybody listening to me in Lincoln, Nebraska, want to send me the information, please? FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. Just put in the subject line, Nebraska. Nebraska Watchdog has uncovered training documents given to middle school teachers in Lincoln, Nebraska, telling them not to use, quote-unquote, gendered expressions and to call out, quote, binary models of gender, unquote, when they see them. Quote, avoid asking kids to line up as boys and girls or separating them by gender, unquote, begins a document called, quote, 12 Easy Steps on the Way to Gender Inclusiveness, unquote. Yes, you heard that right, folks. Quote, Instead, use things like odd and even birth date or, uh, unquote, or, quote, would you, which would you choose, skateboards or bikes, milk or juice dogs or cats, summer or winter talking or listening. It goes on and on like that, unquote. I'm just adding some things here, folks. Uh, continuing here with the article at WoundedAmericanWarrior.com, always ask yourself, quote, will this configuration create a gendered space, unquote. Quote, don't use phrases such as boys and girls, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, and similarly gendered expressions to get kids' attention, unquote. It continues, quote, provide an opportunity for every student to identify as, uh, identify a preferred name or pronoun when you find it necessary to reference gender, say, uh, quote, boy, girl, both, or neither, unquote. When asked why, use this as a teachable moment. Emphasize to students that your classroom recognizes and celebrates the gender diversity of all students, unquote. That is a, out of a document, according to uh, an, uh, the Daily Caller, according to the Nebraska Watchdog in Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. That is what's happening in Lincoln, Nebraska. The article continues, Lincoln Public Schools Superintendent Steve Joel defended the materials last week and told local radio host Kevin Thomas that, quote, our position, ours is inclusiveness. We know that there's a correlation between bullying and gender as well as sexual preference. And so, you know, as a school district, we're just trying to provide information for our folks to understand that a little bit, uh, understand that a little bit better. And I think that's why they... And I think that's what they've done, and I think they're doing a great job with it, unquote. Quote, be tolerant of openly hostile attitudes or references towards others every time you hear or observe them, by, but also use these as teachable moments, unquote. The training sheet advises, quote, take the opportunity to push the individual on their statements about gender, being punitive may stop the behavior, at least in your presence. Be, being instructive may stop it entirely, unquote. Let me say that again, folks. Let me just say that. Take the opportunity to push the individual on their statements about gender. That's one step that begins brainwashing, folks. It's just one of the steps. 
Continuing on with the article at WoundedAmericanWarrior.com. I'll put this link up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show, by the way. Oh, by, it's, it's uh, on the Free America Radio uh, Facebook page. Uh, quote, I'm happy, I'm pleased, unquote, continued uh, Joel, uh, the uh, Kevin, uh, let me look here, I gotta, I gotta find this, I gotta find this, folks, I wanna give it to you, I gotta find this, Steve Joel, Lincoln Public Schools Superintendent, call the superintendent in Lincoln, Nebraska right now, Lincoln Public Schools Superintendent Steve Joel, this is what else he says, I'm happy, I'm pleased, because we have to create an awareness amongst ourselves that we have kids coming to us from so many different backgrounds, and some of those are confusing to the students themselves, to other students, and to some of our staff, unquote. The sheet also encouraged the middle school teachers to, quote, share personal anecdotes from their own life that reflect gender inclusiveness. Even better, share examples when you were not gender inclusive in your thinking, words, or behaviors, what you learned as a result, and what you will do differently next time, unquote. When asked about teachers whose religious beliefs these instructions might violate, Joel explained that Lincoln Public Schools, quote, don't get involved with politics, we don't get involved with gender preferences. The folks that have strong religious preferences, I mean, certainly they might have a personal opinion on it, but the reality of it is we have to understand our children and we can't be judgmental. We can't look at kids and say, you know what, this child, this family doesn't conform to the norm. Therefore, they're not going to get the best, the very best we can if we have teachers that are offended or bothered by what it is we're trying to do as a school system in serving all students out of all populations and demographics, then they need to meet with their principal and talk through that but the uh, expectation is that uh, is that we're going to do it unquote in other words if you argue with your superintendent if you argue with your school principal about your personal spiritual religious beliefs against this you know what they're gonna say screw you we're gonna do it anyway that's what the school system is going to do. So this is why you have to call your Lincoln, uh, your your uh, what, what 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 was it up here? Let me let me go here and I'll give it to you. Steve Joel, Lincoln Public Schools Superintendent in Lincoln, Nebraska. Continuing, he did explain that the materials had not been disseminated district-wide and that the district instead takes a school-by-school approach on these issues. Quote, now obviously there might be a school where this isn't a conversation and maybe doesn't need to be a conversation. To Irving, which is a middle school, credits, they have children that represent what the discussion points are and they're helping their uh, faculty understand and give uh, definition, unquote. The materials also contained a handout on quote, the gingerbread person put together by self-identified, quote, social justice comedian, unquote, Sam Killerman, which explains that, quote, gender is one of those things everyone thinks they understand, but most people don't. Like inception, gender isn't binary, unquote. Quote, we've got to help kids understand whether they're observing it or whether they're living it, that differences or that differences are okay that we're all there to learn unquote said joel and let me interject something here as well i'm okay with people who are of a diverse background learning something new i'm fine with that we're all in that boat but to push that on children six seven eight nine ten eleven years old why do you want to look at your daughter and say you know, the school's going to tell you that you're not a girl. That's going to confuse the hell out of them, don't you think so? You're going to look at your son who's 10 years old in Little League and going to play baseball, and there's a girl on the team. You're going to say, no, they're just another teammate. Well, that's in that regard, in a positive way, that's very good. They're a teammate. There's, there's all these fine lines. You cross over here, it's okay. You cross over there, not okay. You do this, you do that. It's not going to be good with somebody else, but it's going to be fine with somebody else. Do you see where this is going, folks? Call Steve Joel at the Lincoln Superintendent's office and tell him how disappointed you are in keeping it 
general in keeping it uh, what what is that word non uh helping them understand that they're individuals but helping the kids understand that they are boys and girls that there is a difference and 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 again i have to agree with this one line we've got to help kids understand whether they're observing it or whether they're living it that differences are okay that we're all there to learn i agree with that line but not in the context by which this is being presented okay everybody has to be equal no one has a gender no one no what they respect the differences of people they say that it's okay to be different, but they want everybody to be the same. Do you see the insanity in this, folks? Do you have, have you even gotten a clue how bad this truly is? Continuing, one of the sheets defines, quote-unquote, gender... Oops, excuse me, I went way ahead here. Continuing, let me back up. Not everyone is pleased with materials, which can be seen here. There's a link there, and I'll, I'll put that up too as well. Al Riskowski, executive director of the Nebraska Family Alliance, said they go, quote, way beyond trying to teach someone how to respect another individual, unquote, and that they're trying to push a, quote, whole new idea of boy-girl, unquote. He was also concerned that these materials are aimed at teachers responsible to very young children since they contain suggestions like, quote, create classroom names and then ask all of the, quote, unquote, purple penguins, Uh, to meet at the rug, unquote, as a way to avoid the phrase, quote, unquote, boys and girls. Let me, um, I just downloaded a PDF for this uh, uh, thing here. There's a link in the story. It says seen here. It's a PDF, so you might want to get that as well. Continuing, one of the sheets defines, quote, unquote, gender identity as, quote, a psychological quality. Unlike biological sex, it can't be observed or measured, only reported by the individual. Like biological sex, it can uh, consists of more than two categories, including those who identify as a third gender, two spirit, both, or a gender, neither, unquote. Asked about how they were handling parents and teachers who were upset with these uh, with the materials, Joel said that, quote, we'll meet with anyone who'd like to meet with us. We have to think about 39,000 students, more than 39,000. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to this. I don't believe that this is going to cause us to make any changes. There you go, folks. That is up on the uh, Free America Radio website. Okay, and I have <clears throat> gender spectrum that PDF that I said to download. There's 12 of those, and it's 12 easy ways. Uh, it's, excuse me, 12 easy steps on the way to gender inclusiveness. And uh, yeah, it says continue reading. So let's continue reading. I'll pass the bottom of the hour break, uh, as I have already actually, and uh, actually. When I continue reading, I'll come back from the uh, break, and we've only got a a few minutes left, so I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can, if possible. So, anyway, I'm going to go to break, be right back, give my voice a little rest, get some water. Hey, enjoy. I'll be back in about three minutes. The BK Factor, with your host, Brian Keller, on the Shake and Wake Radio Network, shakeandwakeradio.com. Did you know that the first Matrix was designed to be a perfect human world where none suffered, where everyone would be happy? And it was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Entire crops were lost. Some believed that we lacked the programming language to describe your perfect world, but I believe that As a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. So the perfect world was a dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from. Which is why the Matrix was redesigned to this 
the peak of your civilization. I am wondering, why are you here? And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Ah, damn politicians. My mother always told me this country would be screwed if the liberals had their way. The only sanity I get is when I listen to Jeff Wagner on the conservative voice. Only on the conservative radio network. Hey folks, welcome back. This is the Wayne Spear Show podcast for the 8th of October 2014. You ever get to the point where you're talking to somebody and you and, and you feel like your lips are not working? <laughs> I don't know, it's just, and blah, 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 you know. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm just letting you know. Hey, just strange things. Let me get back to that article that says read more. Uh, it's over at the. It's from the Daily Caller. Tristan Bloom over there is a contributor, and um, it goes on down. And uh, I'll read this. It says, "Not everyone is pleased with the material." Which uh, this is uh, an article titled. Uh, you'll see it there uh, nebraska school tells teachers to avoid gendered expressions okay and says here not everyone will be pleased with the materials which can be seen here there's a pdf which i downloaded al rakowski riskowski executive director of the nebraska family alliance said they go way beyond trying to teach someone how to uh, respect another individual that's in quotes and that they're trying to push a quote whole new idea of boy girl unquote he also He was also concerned that these materials were aimed at teachers responsible for very young children since they contain suggestions like, quote, create classroom names and then ask all of the, uh, quote, unquote, purple penguins to meet at the rug, unquote, as a way to avoid as a way of avoiding the phrase, quote unquote, boys and girls. And it goes on to say one of the sheets defines gender identity as a, quote, psychological quality. Unlike biological sex, it can't be observed or measured only reported by the individual. Like biological sex, it consists of more than two categories. Now get this, folks, including those who identify as a third gender, two spirit, in parentheses it says both, or a gender, in parentheses it says neither, unquote. Asked about how they were handling parents or teachers who were upset with the materials, Joel said, and here's his quote, uh, we'll meet with anyone who'd like to meet with us. We have to think about 39,000 students, more than 39,000. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to this. I don't believe that this is going to cause us to make any changes. In other words, he's not saying that, uh, you know, the one-size-fits-all policy, he, he, does, he wants that to be the one-size-fits-all policy. He doesn't think that parents or anybody that are going to bombard his office with emails and telephone calls and go protest are ever going to make any dents in what he wants to do and his district wants to do because he's going to put this through anyway. It doesn't really matter to him what anybody else says, period. He's going to do it. He said he would anyway. Uh, Continuing, he was also asked whether the district had a locker room and a bathroom policy for transgendered students. This has become important, folks. Quote, it's a work in progress, unquote, he began. Uh, Quote, and it's relatively new, but it's individualized. It's between the family and the administration, and the determinations are being made in the best interest of the child. That's not something we're ever going to talk about publicly because it's pretty emotional and it's very, very confidential. But you know it's a real-life issue, and you know I think most people will understand that it is, and there's probably not a simple solution. So we have to work with the family, and that's what we're doing, unquote. Yeah. And I know... 
I've I've read stories where school districts have just totally ostracized anybody that is, you know, thinking of themselves as or even transgendered. Okay, you hear of families taking boys and dressing them up like girls because they believe that they they were a girl. They wanted a girl, and and about ninety percent of the time, that's what it is. The other ten percent, nobody really knows. It's not the child identifying as a girl. It's it's the parents saying we wanted a girl, so oh, we got a boy. We'll just dress him up like a girl. Uh, he'll change, and then we'll we'll have a, you know, get the you know, whatever. And I've heard stories where parents have taken their young kids and and because they wanted a girl, they wanted a boy, they go get the sex change while they're still babies. I mean, this is stupid. So the parents in this situation need to go to the school and say, no, 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 no. I have a girl, I have a boy. That's the way you're going to identify them. And if not, we'll go and pull them out and homeschool them. We don't care. We don't care about you. And the school district doesn't care. What did what did this, this Joel guy say? What does the superintendent say here? Let me scroll up here. It says right here, um, 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 let me look. Uh, let me, I'm trying to find it. Oh, he says this. <clears throat> now, now get this. This is the Lincoln Public Schools Superintendent Steve Joel defended the materials last week and told local radio host Kevin Thomas that, quote, our position, ours is inclusive. We know that there's a correlation between bullying and gender as well as sexual preference. And so you know, as a school district, we're trying to provide information for our folks to understand uh, understand that a little bit better. And I think that's what, what they've done. And I think they're going to... Uh, They're doing a great job with it, unquote. Now, here's what else he says. The training sheet itself he stands on, and this is what the training sheet itself says, quote, be intolerant to open of openly hostile attitudes or references towards others every time you hear or observe them, but also use these as teachable moments, unquote. The training sheet advises, quote, take the opportunity to push the individual on their statements about gender being punitive may stop the behavior, at least in your presence. Being instructive may stop it entirely. Did you hear that? Take the opportunity to push the individual on their statements about gender. In other words, pound it over their head until they comply. Is what it said right there. Be intolerant of openly hostile attitudes or references towards others every time. That's in capital bold letter capital letters. You hear or observe them. But also use these as teachable moments. And, and this Joel guy, Steve Joel, goes on to say, I'm happy and pleased because we have to create, we have to create an awareness amongst other, uh, ourselves that we have kids coming to us so, uh, from so many different backgrounds, and some of, these, uh, some of those are confusing to the students themselves, to other students, and to some of our staff. Now, he says he also says this when asked about teachers whose religious beliefs these instructions might violate Joel explained that Lincoln Public Schools quote don't get involved with politics excuse me it's not politics Mr. Joel it's religion we don't get involved with gender preferences excuse me yes you do you just said everybody has uh, to forget about gender and and totally abolish it and, and treat everybody the same Uh, He goes on to say, the folks that have strong religious preferences, and and this is what Steve Joel, superintendent uh, there, uh, says, I mean, certainly they might have a personal opinion on it, but the reality of it is we have to understand our children and we can't be judgmental and we can't look at kids and say, you know uh, what, this child, this family doesn't conform to the norm. Here's what he says. Therefore, they're not going to get the very best we can. Uh, if we have teachers that are, now get this, if we have teachers that are offended or bothered by what it is we're trying to do as a school system in serving all students and all populations and all demographics, then they need to meet with their principal and talk through that. But the exception, 
or excuse me, but the expectation is that we're going to do it. Unquote. In other words, he doesn't really give a crap about what you want, what you know, what you care about. He he doesn't really give a crap. And I've also shared that on the uh, Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. So if you want to take a look at that, please do. Bottom line is, folks, we're not all the same. We never have been the same. There is boys. There is girls. There are men. There are women. That's the way it is. Period. End of sentence. There are those who are born transgendered. Yes, I understand this. I've read the documents. Trust me, it does happen. I've also read information pertaining to, as I mentioned before, families and and moms and dads saying, oh, we wanted a girl, so we just decided that, oh, our boy's going to be a girl. What? You know, and and the parents brainwashing the four or five-year-old boy into believing that he's a girl. You know, the... This whole world, this whole country, this whole society in the U.S. is so screwed up that we don't know what's right or wrong anymore. And we sift through all the bull crap to find the exact basic understanding of who we truly are. And then we try to identify ourselves as what we believe our conscience has led us to believe. I am a man. That's what I am. I'm heterosexual. That's what I am. This is what I do. I, you know, have a radio show. I'm an actor. I'm this. I'm that. I'm an artist. This is what I know I am. Anybody that tells me anything else other than that is full of bull crap. And anybody telling any child, whether it's a teacher, superintendent of the school district, moms, dads, whatever, telling their little girl, their little boy, that they're not who they are is totally sick in the head. Now, that's my opinion, of course, and I know you're going to argue that opinion from, you know, kingdom come, but I, this is what I know. It's reality. Folks, when you go down the street at a four-way stop and you see four red stop signs, what do you do? You say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to blow right through it. And then you get hit and get in an accident, wind up in a hospital and have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for surgeries. Do you understand the simplicity of the fact that when you see these four stop signs and you're cruising down a road, that common sense tells you, stop. It doesn't tell you to skid tires on pavement. It doesn't tell you anything other than stop. And the book that you read to get your license says the same thing. Common sense has got thrown into the garbage for some people. And we're walking around like freaking zombies thinking everything's going to be okay. And then there's the other part of those people that say, well, I deserve everything that I want, so the government's going to give it to me and I don't want to work. Well, let me tell you something. That's not how it goes. Because I sure as hell don't want to pay my taxes to somebody sitting on their ass doing nothing. I don't want to pay my taxes to somebody, some group of people that are going to send our your boys and girls to 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 a school to indoctrinate them with this kind of bull crap or common core or anything like that or when they get older I'm I, I don't want to pay my taxes to a country that when your kids get older they're conscripted they're drafted or they have to go into the military to go fight a war that we should not be involved in do you understand that This is bull crap. This is bull crap. I want all parents in Lincoln, Nebraska to go to that superintendent and tell them that you're going to stop this bull crap now. Period. End of sentence. And if he says, no, we're not going to stop it, then you as parents need to collectively get together as a group protecting your children and protecting your school district from this maniac, and you need to sue his ass off in federal court. Start with the municipal and local areas, but you take his ass to court because he cannot sit there and say, well, you know, because we have a diverse background and demographics, we don't want to call this boy and this girl a boy and a girl. We'll just, you know, put them there. Oh, they're purple penguins. You're out of your freaking mind, Mr. Joel. 
No, 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 no. See, I'm a little excited today. You see, stuff like this is important to me. Education is important to me. Doing the right thing is important to me. And if it's not important to you parents in Lincoln, Nebraska, then, hey, enjoy your day. Enjoy your day trying to decipher the crap that your kids bring to you from school, trying to say, Mom, Dad, I don't get this. What is this? Let me calm down now. I got a few minutes here. Let me calm. I get really, really excited when it comes to our education system and how it's being destroyed by the libtards in Washington, D.C. and in your local states with the liberal agendas indoctrinating your kids in your local governmental indoctrination institutes. I get a little, I get a little bit excited and a little bit upset and frustrated, okay? And I hope you understand why, and I hope that you can forgive me for being so upset about this stuff. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. I just, where are we going, folks? Seriously, if we continue on the track that we're going, we're headed for a brick freaking wall. Do you understand me? We better change it now. We have to change it now. There is no other way to do it. We have to rebel against the system that is in place at the moment. By the way, that's very constitutional. If you go look at the Constitution and look at the Declaration of Independence, you have the obligation and the duty to change this government from the tyrannical system that it is into a more... uh, uh, a system that is more of, by, and for the people originally how it was supposed to be. So that's up to you. And if you don't, ha- if you don't have the guts to do that, if you don't have the balls to do that, if you don't have the understanding on how you can do that, uh, come join me on the Views Express Live today. I may be a, a, a lot less frustrated 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Free America Radio Network. Um, You can email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. I would love to hear from you if you have comments, concerns, anything. Even if you disagree with me, I'm fine with that. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Put in the subject line radio so I know you heard this show. Also, uh... If you have any uh, any information that you can share with me, anybody in Lincoln, Nebraska, or near, nearby that knows about this uh, story and what's really happening in the area, please send me that information as well. Radio at USA.com. Radio at USA.com. You can help Free America uh, Radio Network out, get to the next level by donating whatever you can. Hey, you got a buck in your pocket you're not using? <laughs> You can be a part of the growth of Free America Radio Network, and I, 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 I cannot tell you how much, uh, how appreciative I am of that help and of you sharing this show and listening to the show when it's in, uh, when it's in, uh, you know, archive. When you when you listen to it uh, uh, outside of the live show, I mean, it's it's really really cool. Thank you very much for that support. I appreciate that. You can go to freeamericaradio.us or the Wayne S. Pierce show.weebly.com for more information. If you want to sponsor the show, you can do that as well. It's not going to kill your advertising budget, I can tell you that right now. Uh, or please get your emergency food supply today. You never know when the next man made or natural disaster will happen and you'll need something extra to take care of your family. In the process, when you do get your emergency food supply, Today, you'll be helping out not only your family, but you'll be helping out Free America Radio Network. And I, this network can certainly use it. I'm pushing it to the next level, so you can be a part of that as well. So anyway, talk to you guys later uh, today, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Free America Radio Network, on the Views Expressed Live. Go to freeamericaradio.us.